Hello, this is a quick tutorial on how to use Vester. So let me show you the project files for Vester. This is everything you're going to download from the repository. And really the meat and potatoes is the configs folder, which is where we contain the configuration information and the test for the configs. And the test folder, which is where the tests are run against the environment to make sure that what you've configured is true. So let's open up the configs folder real quick. And out of the box, you're going to get a default config that just contains some sample values that you can update with your environmental values and a config.test file, which is going to test the configuration to make sure that it's valid so that you can be sure that it's good to go before you run any tests. Now, if we open up the config.ps1 file, we can just see that it's an array, basically a large hash table of values, and all the values are clearly defined for the scope, which is what's going to actually run within the environment. So what clusters, hosts, and VMs do you want this config file to apply to, as well as the vCenter IP, DRS, config for host, etc. So it's all in here, and you just set the values to what are applicable for your environment. You can test those values pretty simply. If you open up PowerShell, go to your Vester folder somewhere, and you can do an invoke pester, because you have to have pester installed, and you can define the test to the configs folder. And what it's going to do is actually run the test for the config file. It's going to validate that all the values there are within tolerance and set up correctly. If that comes back with no failures, you have a valid config file. If you see any errors, then you need to fix them before you go forward. So that's the actual config itself. And if we look deeper in the project, we go to the test folder. We can see a bunch of tests here that have been written by the community for you to use. I'll just pull up the DRS one as an example. And it looks a little complex here if you've not written PowerShell before, but really all it's just saying is, do we want to, in the top, remediate the changes that we find, any differences that we find? By default, that's false. We're not gonna touch your environment by default. You have to tell the program that you want remediation to occur. And then where's the configuration file that you're pulling from? Because you can have a different config for different environments. And then from there, we're just taking the values from the configuration file, checking to make sure, using pester, that those values are true. And if not, there's a remediation section where we correct the drift. And if there's any issues with the remediation, the script will stop and the test will fail. So let's take a look at that. I'll go back to the PowerShell window here. Now, if you just type invoke pester from the root of a Vester project, it's just going to go ahead and run everything. It's going to run the config file validation. It's going to run all the different things. I'm going to stop it here so it doesn't just go on forever. It's going to run all the tests against the environment with the configuration values supplied. You can get a little fancy with this, though. I've got a sample script here. Let me just go ahead and grab it. Uh, so I've got a fully kind of baked configuration here where I'm saying, hey, invoke pester, which is the unit testing framework we use, and only use tests that have been tagged. All of the tests are tagged with cluster. And in fact, I want to specifically tell Pester that all of my tests are in the tests folder. Remediate is set to false. And I can actually say, let's make this true. I want to actually fix any drift that we find. And use the config file found in config slash config.1.ps1. So let's put that in there and watch that go. So I'm going to paste that command. Now notice that it found an issue and actually remediated it. It expected the aggressiveness of the DRS mode to be two, which is the second to most aggressive mode, but it was actually three, which is the middle kind of conservative mode. And so it went ahead, remediated this demo cluster and set it to two. And that's why the test passed because it was able to remediate. So it told you that there was a difference and it went ahead and fixed it and that the automation level is fully automated, so that's good. So this is a quick and dirty example of how to use Vester. There's a lot of different parameters you can use and those are in the readme. If you have any tests that are missing and you want to supply those, go ahead and look at the readme. It tells you how to contribute and what files need to be edited. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more tests added to this project.